Croy to a channel of light fluid. And we're back with Manitou Hotel, or more accurately at the moment, the Hinterlands. We are still there with P and Storm. And it has been a while since we did this, but uh, I think it's time we get back to it. So come on, let's get on with it. Where we left off last time. The inn's restaurant was the size of a cramped living room. Its tables were covered by thick, semi-transparent plastic, marred with scratches, cigarette burns, and far more than a single year's worth of unknown gunk. Every other one was decorated with a half-filled ash tray, some of the butts so old they crumbled and released their dust at the slightest breeze. In the kitchen came the gurgling of something being boiled, the only unmistakable is scentily hinterlandsish smell of burning coffee. I had already tasted diabetes-inducing mounded sugar required to hide the flavour. Real local colour. Stormlight arrived at our usual time. That day, none of the usual luxuries of our continental breakfast was served to us. No pungent cheese, slimy ham, hollow bread, or bottle of butter of the land. Just the burning coffee in the kitchen, and a more inviting glass of instant coffee powder. Stormlight sat and waited. The kid was restless, tapping away at his thighs like a set of drums. I had a hard time figuring out the rhythm he's going for. Hell, it's like he's overlapping two or three songs at once. I might just sneak in some humming here and there. Not long after, Storm spoke up. Oh, you've got more music on your phone apart from the jazz songs you play while driving. Let's know. But yeah, if the Wi-Fi holds up long enough, you can download some songs via this app. Just please don't pick anything that's too much for an earworm. While Storm tapped and swiped away, I got up to ask the receptionist why there was no food. It wasn't at the front door, nor in the back room, so I checked the kitchen. There he was, laid on the floor with a tuna sandwich in his hat, half unconscious and high out of his mind. I crouched down to his level and I spoke. You alright? He took one look at me with blurry, drooping eyes and responded with a slurred racial epithet. I my best effort to establish an intellectual exchange, but he's unwilling to engage with me. Trying to sit him up at all just made him push me away. Despite his sorry position in the middle of the room, the fellow seemed perfectly content with his current predicament and the welcoming of my interference. Well, fine, bitch. I'm helping you out to spite now. First thing I did was heft him onto his side. He didn't struggle against that. Or maybe he's just more out of it with each passing second. And I shut off the stove. The idiot had turned it on full blast and the coffee congealed to a singed syrup in the pot. Shut the fridge door. He stirred his angry wine as he tried to fill back up with cold air. I brought the poor bastard a cup of water. That's when I noticed his breathing getting shallow. He sighed. God damn it, if he dies, I'll waste a whole fucking day explaining this situation. I'll probably question the kid. Might even take his charm. What a fucking mess. How about my disgust while I reach into his pocket? The little bundle of papers in his cell phone. No emergency service out there, so I didn't know who the hell to call. But seeing my semi conscious new friend never had to sit through a cybersecurity analyst talking on and on about secure passwords and two factor authentication, which is to say he didn't use a lock screen. His wallpaper was a screen cap from a porn flick, watermarks and all. None of his contacts seemed to be the right person to call. He hadn't messaged or replied to any of them for a number of days. Shuffling through the papers I'd pulled out with the phone, I found a number that was circled a few times. Better than that than one of the eight Zezes and Marias. I got up and called. Hello, uh, do you know, uh... I leaned over to read his name tag. Zezinho? Ah, your brother. Well, he's in a real bad spot over there in and could probably use a hand. You come now? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I'm a bit of a hurry myself, so... She hung up. Sensible enough. Her brother was still breathing, sometimes mumbling. I left him to his nap and went back out to the dining area. So, we getting any food? Nope, coffee's burned, the receptionist burned out. His eyes are goddamn cat and having a bad trip or some shit. His sister's on her way, though. I'll get some food in the road, but sit tight a while longer. I can prepare some instant coffee while the guy's rescue comes. Aye, right, boss. Give me just enough time to finish downloading a couple more songs. 
half the size of the table with a few empty boxes of tea bags and an overturned bottle of instant coffee powder. The only beer glass is locked in a cabinet, a dozen plastic curves and a single proper mug. Features and blanks save the phrase Hail Mary hand painted on it. I'm going to tell myself. I swear drinking from that Hail Mary mug just tasted better. Well, a grace indeed. The instant coffee is actually halfway tolerable, to me at least. Storm, on the other hand, almost wretched after the first sip from his plastic cup. Oh, this tastes like ass. I know, it tastes fine to me. And then slammed the front door open and came stopping in. I pointed towards the kitchen and on she went. That hopefully sorted, I returned to my coffee. Plus, ass tastes much better. Oh, fuck off. I actually had something I wanted to show you. I don't know if there's a song I really like here, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, I got space in my hard drive for it. Now let's not waste any more time. We have an actual decent hotel to hunt. Oh, we're checking out of here. I knocked on one of Storm's horns with my knuckle. Now I'm talking about the Magic Manitor one. Let's go. And we will now head to the flooded town. The roads are shit. It made sense, of course. We'd welcome a stagnant pond. Still made for a rough driving to our goal for the day. At the bottom of the valley, not too far from the salt plains where the sunken remains of Hinterland's first township, Skin Tape here. It flooded some decades ago, not long after my grandpa's involvement in a certain incident. There I was to pay the bill for it. Water seemed unusually clear for a stagnant sinkhole in the hinterlands. The salt seeping in from the land made sure nothing could live there. There's no algae or anything. And unlike the pond, the actual bottom of the hinterlands, this wasn't a polluted cesspit. A few buildings, their roofs barely at the surface of the water, and some distance in was their church steeple. The only thing that stuck out a good distance above the stillness. It's like being in a museum. The old town almost seemed to be frozen in the moment of its destruction. Storm and I spent a good half hour walking around the lake, planning our approach. Fortune seemed to smile on us. We ended up borrowing an old rowboat stuck on some reeds. We rode towards the church's tower. Hinterlands isn't a very loud area. There's something especially quiet feeling about being out in a rowboat. The place was empty in the graveyard, and it's all the more hushed. The sound of our rippled out with each heave. Storm seemed to be having a little trouble getting his bearings. First time on a boat? He looked down at his hooves. Oh, yes, sir. How are you finding it? Fine, oh, yes, it's fine. You need any help rowing? All oh, the things to be shy about. Motion sickness? You're stuck at something far away from you. Breathe deeply and slowly. If I had some snacks or ginger, that'd settle your stomach, but, well, we're already out here. Oh, thank the boss. You know anything about this place? Oh, just a sort of oh, sunk. Oh, I got flooded or something. I mostly just know some of my older brothers hang around around here sometimes. You'll probably find a lot of beer cans floating around some corner or other. Things seem to float our way, and it's tried to slitter in the bottom some meters down with all their buildings. And who could really tell past all the corrosion and scaling? Once we bumped into the church steeple, we circled the place to search the easiest way in. But most of the windows were intact, as a back one which seemed to be left open when the place was abandoned. You all man said I was supposed to dive down, right? I guess it's your time to shine, yeah. You have got out of my pay, right? Right. Not gonna lie, it's my family's legacy here. I'd do it myself if I could. But these tail feathers aren't just for show, you know. I will just get caught on something and drown myself. Yeah, yeah. You don't know how to swim, right? Yes, Dad. I've gone swimming before, don't worry. Now, that fiend from the salt plains mentioned someone putting up some magic to protect this place using my grandpa's feathers. Yeah, that's true. Shouldn't be too hard to dispel it. I pulled an old tail feather, dipped in some alcohol I brought with me, and set it alight. Storm noticed my agony, but said nothing. 
May the path forward reveal itself. Storm turned away from me and started checking off his clothes. He prepared to leap, but I stopped him and handed over a tail feather. What's this for? It's it a protective charm. Take it into your underwear. If anything happens, I'll dive down to get you, okay? Well, if you could deal with my weight, you'll end up drowning yourself, too. Maybe dying wouldn't be so bad. Don't know about that. See you in a minute, boss. He took my feather into his waistband, then plunged in. Seeing in the water was always so uncomfortable. The pain wasn't there, but everything felt a little streaked. Like there's a semi-transparent curtain in front of me. Storm seemed like he really had to struggle against his own buoyancy to get down to the window. Once he did, darkness embraced him. No glimmers of light, sure. But which ones could you trust and follow when you didn't have much time or air? Oh, and I hope I'm not drowning this kid. He swooped around in the dark and smacked into a grimy window he thought was a door. Oh shit, don't tell me he cut himself in the glass. You lazy cunt, colonial fucking bastard, get in the back while I hate to die for you. Jiggled the knob at the end of the dark hallway, but it didn't budge. And coughed. The bubble shimmered as they crossed a ray of sunlight. Stop! No! Oh god, I'm shit! He had to kick at the door, grabbed the banister and hurled his weight against it. Movements were getting sluggish as he swam through the hole he kicked into it. I was ready and buttoning in my shirt and preparing to dive in after him. The dull, multicoloured light of the chapel was oddly beautiful in the murky water. Cursed myself for having drowned a boy. Then I heard gasping and coughing. Not from the vision, but from under the church's roof. It seemed there still existed a pocket of stale air at the very top of the chapel. I sat back and down in the rowboat and crossed myself. You wouldn't have gone, even gone in. You'd have rowed and ran away. If you ain't really easy, it's alright. You're just glad you don't have to do any work or put your sorry life on the line. I almost tore up more feathers to get myself to shut up. My concentration was shot. I still trying to keep watch. Storm dunked his head back down to the water to look around, once he caught his breath. He did this a few times. I wonder if he thought the light was beautiful too. He took a deep breath before diving back down again. Yeah, the door had broken through was the altar. A big wooden ornately engraved cross hung behind the pulpit. Off to the sides a rotten old harmonium and a big cabinet. All as long as it was, the lock cabinet was easy enough to pry open for Storm. As for the cross, he wrenched it off the wall. Storm returned for another breath of air. He really would have died, you know. Just happened to get lucky finding that air pocket. How many people does your family have to kill for you to learn your lesson? Wasn't enough for your gramps to butcher the mythicals that lived here? Instead of backtracking, Storm swam down the aisle and examined the church's main door. All this keeping it closed with a rotten plank of wood. He pushed it aside like it was nothing. There's the light. Isn't it beautiful? That's all you can do is sit back and watch while the boy does your work for you. Had he died, would you at least have gone down to retrieve the pelt and the cross? I mean, let's face it, no that he done left his corpse behind. First, your scrawny ass would never be able to drag it back out. And second, you'd be ruined if anyone found out you were involved in this mess. Imagine explaining to the authorities you killed a kid while searching for some magic fucking hotel. It'd be best to leave him down there. No one would even miss him. Shut up! Shut up! He just about jumped out of the boat when Storm resurfaced, bringing me back to my senses. Before I could say anything, he shouted. Oh, a piece of cake! To give more than one shake to get his shaggy hair out of his eyes. It looked like Perseus branching the Gorgon's head. But all the pals on the cross in the murky waters. In that moment I knew we'd find that damned hotel. I drove past the carcass of a crashed truck, turned on its side like a dead animal. The engine was spinning on the ground just beside the bleached bones of a cow. 
the trunk barely half covered by a pile of salt, some of it still in rough cloth sacks. The other butterflies were swarming on the road all over the truck bed, their wings swung up to the skies and budging ever so slightly with the breeze. I slowed the car down just enough to a little rubber neck. I saw that some of them were bigger than my hand. But all of them were fighting for space around the salt. Were they eating it? Was that even possible? Storm tapped his hooves, then looked to the darkened horizon on his right. An ending stretch where empty sky met a ravaged, vengeful earth. Well, I might have asked a question. I should. You said you were a cop, right? I'm just curious why you quit it all. It's not even magic can save you from being made redundant these days. I swallowed my saliva and stifled the cough that was stuck in my throat. They directed my eyes towards the orange brushstrokes on the horizon to my left. Yeah, pay wasn't good. Job was a drag. Think along with my co-workers and my boss was a prick. Uh, the usual. Man, that's boring. Lord, you're about how I shouldn't join the police. I was expecting a real story there. A smart kid like you can make a decent future of yourself elsewhere. Don't go wasting your life on violence. You know, sometimes life's just boring like that. So what do you do for a living now? What's that look like? Nothing aside from wasting my time and money chasing a magical hotel that probably doesn't even exist. I'm between jobs. When you go back, but an offer, in fact. That's why I have the time to come here. Much better than being back home with my dad hounding me all day long about quitting. We didn't like it. He yelled so loud his neighbours called to complain. He likes to think law enforcement's our family business, you see. I always say that my grandpa didn't stick with it. Called him a cow for spending his life chasing a fake hotel. So, what do you want with it? Excuse me? You said something about inheritance, I think, but you never told me what that meant. So, what are you looking for? Grandpa left some important stuff there. Found to believe what he said. He left it for me in his will. There's more to it, I don't quite know where to start. None of his fucking business. Should I just tell him to breathe, relax? That hotel was the only one thing my grandpa had that was good. Storm turned his head from me towards the landscape. All it were the corpses of cars and barely standing buildings on salted earth. Seems the bride's here might have much good in that place. Can't say I blame him. You were with the colonel, right? You heard what Nini said. He snitched and got a dozen people like us killed. That's not even half the bad shit he got involved in with life. He just couldn't take the guilt and it fucked him up. Soon out with Nini to find his hotel, usually for weeks at a time. As much as I loved him, all I ever heard was that he was a lousy dad. And he never denied it. So working the law fucked him up, then trying to find a way out of it fucked my dad up in turn. Yeah, the grandma wasn't any good either. They were doing porgs everything that happened. Okay, but well what's that got to do with finding the hotel? My grandpa was the one person who believed I could break out of this cycle consuming our family. Dad only wanted me to uphold the family tradition, going to the police work. I'm not the nice kind. Grandpa didn't want that for me though. It ruined him and he couldn't stop it from ruining my dad too. Things for him I tried other jobs, but things didn't work out and I... Had a fire team of guys better than I could ever be, closed down shop and give up on a dream. So much blood and sweat wasted. All they had to show was a puddle of tears and a pile of debt. I had to make a living. So I took my dad upon his offer and joined the force to do some kind of special work for them. Grandpa didn't like that. So I had to keep on trying something else. I had to break the spiral. Never let it go until... He died. It was unexpected. It just happened overnight. It wasn't pretty either. I clenched my jaw against a sudden flash of mental image. At least it's probably quick. But he had a will and he left me a few things. 
They're supposedly in that hotel. So I want to find it and bring them back to my dad. Show him this magic hotel exists and Grandpa wasn't crazy. I want to prove that we... I hope the storm didn't notice how hard I gripped the steering wheel as I talked. So out of my vision I could tell he was paying damn close attention to me then. I should have tightened the knot in my throat. Instead it came undone and everything I should have held back came pouring out. It pisses me off. This whole got a mess. Let's say this hole does exist. So Gramps runs away because someone's out to get him. Finds a place and he's safe there. Things are good for a while. So only a pretty damn decent money and dreams of staying there just a little longer. Just long enough to save up some and go elsewhere and build a nice life. Then he only goes crazy and kicks everyone out. Not even giving them the time to grab their savings or their passports. So he's back here, not a charm to his name, and no choice to go back to the working for the colonel. And then what happens? People get killed because this entire shithole's caught in a spiral of blood and death. That's so why he ran away in the first place. And there he was, right back in the goddamn centre of it. You think that's what he wanted his life to be like? The guy just wanted to do some honest work. There he was, with no way out. As time passes, he marries, has a kid, you and they searches the hotel. The thing is, he's obsessed with it. He never let his family starve so he can go out and search the hinterlands. His son grows up to hate him, of course. The time and goddamn recursion loves fucking with us. So the grandson ends up hating his father too. And the family tradition for good measure. So Gramps puts the idea in my head that I can get away from all this mess. So I try and I can because it's more than a tradition. It's a cycle. Storm's hand moved with the pocket and made him put a handful of paper clips. Ah, good kid. Can't shake the feeling this whole thing's just another sick joke. I still the only used to say that the place was meant to shelter those who are lost. And then that fucked up piece of shit kicked everyone out. What a joke, right? And now we all have to live with that and what it made us into. My grandpa ended up killing a dozen people because of it. My family's been all broken up ever since. We all hate each other. In fact, it's a miracle we haven't all killed each other yet. Stop. Stop, goddammit. Just shut the fuck up. Best part is I do find the place will still all be fucked up with no way out. Grandpa's dead. Ted was smashed in with a rock, and Dad's an alcoholic. Mom's long gone, just up and left, and here I am chasing the magic hotel in the middle of nowhere. What a beautiful family we are, huh? And all that's just the best case scenario. Let's face it, it's all mine towards hotel bullshit. For the odds, it's even real. Yeah, I'm looking for it, but I'm not an idiot. The whole thing reads us like the ramblings of a madman. If that's the case, then what the hell am I even good for? Don't blink, damn it, I'll see your badger welling up. Is this my karma? This is because we're created to do fucked up shit. Can I even do something good? Storm looked at me with a depth of concern that was nothing short of humiliating. God damn it. See, Storm, that's the thing with being a mythical like you and I. History keeps repeating itself and it fucking loves playing pranks on us. Very first P, you know what he did? He was the watchman of some kidnapped lady. That's way back in the olden times though. The solution to that problem was smashing his head with a rock. From his blood a whole generation of people like me came to be. Since then it's been the same thing over and over. Did the gods dirty work until they fucked off. After that we did for the mortal's governments. Worst part is, this is all a curse, you know. I'm not trying to spook you, but curses exist and this is one of them. The same thing over and over again. It's all messed up with an ancestor of mine watching over a prisoner. Just look at you and me now. Jesus Christ, God Almighty, just please don't let this end with someone smashing my head with a stone this time. Fucking pathetic. You're supposed to be the one in charge, and here I'm spilling your goddamn guts to the kid while crying your eyes out. You can see just how fucked up you really are. Well, you're already planning to grab your wallet and run again. Who oh, wouldn't want to get as far away from a sick, sad bastard like you as possible? Probably happen the second you find a place to park. And you'd fucking deserve it, you got that piece of shit. You don't talk about yourself like that, boss. I mean, you're saying you can't do good, but well, I'm here. His voice. You had those deep, nasally rumblings being as gentle as they were then. Don't you fucking talk to me like that, I don't need you to. Well, if it wasn't for you, I'd still be homeless and without this charm. 
What do you think would happen to me then, huh? No, you need proof you can do right. Just look at me. You saved me, boss. I wouldn't have a future li worth living for without you. It's goddamn bumpkin doing the exact right shit to say to someone like me. Tiny smile stretched the corners of my beak. Turned it towards the window to hide it, rubbing up my eyes and hoping he'd think it was just fatigue I was wiping away. So they go to your head, kid. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thank you, Storm. I... Yep. I'm glad you're around right now. Uh, glad to be here, boss. Continuing our drive, staring at our respective windows into the growing darkness. If we didn't find the hotel, at least I'd found the mine at all. And just maybe, if we looked hard enough, we'd find some of the threats Theseus left behind as well. Around 5am, when the clouds resemble rough coarse brushstrokes, it's the best moment to head outside for a cup of coffee enjoy the crisp morning air. Birds chirping, maybe the smell of flowers you can find on a bench in your garden, or a wet grass scent you find yourself among the untended, dilapidated homes. There won't be any mosquitoes or bugs and bugs around just yet. If you keep your eyes sharp, you might spot a hawk flying overhead, or a fox scurrying about near the road. Frogs, after a whole night spent croaking away, will crawl beneath wooden staircases of the houses, foundations, or huddled together by the shady walls. It's the only time of day the hinterlands can be considered beautiful. On that particular morning, the birds chirping tempted me out early enough to witness the sunrise. I snuck out the room. The door only let out a hum when I closed it. Got some instant coffee at the reception, sat outside, drinking it from that mug with Hail Mary written on it, which I'd borrowed the previous day. Thought like Grandpa. He and I used to watch the sunrise together when I was a kid, where I became a grumpy teen. I should have spent more time with him. Sunrise is so beautiful, it happens every day, but I never bothered. Should have called him more often, too. The third from behind, followed by the clopping of hooves, interrupted my train of thought. Didn't have to look. Who else could it be? But I did nonetheless. It dawned on me then how Storm's fur reflected the light. When the sun hit in just the right way, it gave off flashes of light white. It's a handsome lad he is, albeit an overgrown child as well. Sat on the bench, huddling into himself as we both watched the sky grow bright. I could see it in his eyes. He was no stranger to the sight. Another goddamn day. Yep. I sit for my Hail Mary mug. Storm grunted and blearily stared at the sunrise, so you might photosynthesize some energy from it. And coffee's still shit. Why is you ain't drinking it from one of those melty plastic cups? Another sip. This time I click my tongue inside after swallowing it. What can I say? This mug is glorious. Anything would taste at least half decent from it. I wonder if anyone will miss it. That got his attention. He stared at me like I'd just grown a second head, and he's belting out a full-throated Ave Maria. I didn't expect a cop to steal. Oh, you sweet, naive, overgrown child. That's because I lie to you. I really am a salty in devil. Just waiting for my chance to take an innocent like you is back with me to hell. Oh, very funny. The kid huffed and grunted and heaved himself to his hooves. He stumbled just slightly as he turned to make his way back to the room. It won't be long for I'm ready to go. Uh huh. Twenty minutes later, we're on the road to our next destination. Hmm. Let's head to the Memorial of the Twelve. Maybe that's a good place to go. I checked the bones in the back seat. The sounds as heavy as a coffin door permeated the car. Even the usual scrape of Storm's horns against the ceiling could budget. The signs alone kept from acknowledging the possibility that the opportunistic cannibal might try to do the same to the minotaur and I, should we ever meet with a similar regrettable incident. 
Bring peace to their spirits would be a tall order for anyone. Definitely so if the grants and the manor enable their massacre. Thankfully all their brain needs a familiar outlet to keep pretending nothing is amiss. Matters of purity and defilement have long been second nature to me, as no cultists and the mythical. The logistics of our task were enough to keep me occupied. Couldn't say the same for Storm, who squirmed in his seat and tried to lean away from the chest sitting behind him. I know ground might have been our best shot for anything resembling a Christian burial. It's not like I could pay for a funeral, even a plot of land to bury them legitimately. Likewise, questions would surely arise to the nature of the remains of anyone else who had to see them. I had no intention of playing the Colonel's accomplice or getting caught right in a wrong two generations old. From a ritualistic standpoint, all I could do was go back to the place it happened, retracing the road's fateful spiral down to an otherwise unremarkable patch of land at the bottom of Skin Tapia. If you closer, dug out two paper clips in the glove compartment, handed one to Storm and then started working the other between my fingers. A little bit helps, I reckon. So, this is it? Where they died? Yep, yeah, shot down all twelve from an ambush during the night. Then the colonel took their corpses and did what he did. Does eating folks like us really make her immortal? So you know all the colonel was, there might be something to it after all. But don't you worry about it. It's not something most people would know about. Even few would even think to try it. Colonel was, uh... A uh, special case. But he doesn't have to save from his gold egg of a wife, if the gossip is to be believed. Storm opened the car's trunk and pulled out the shovels we bought. So, we are giving him a Christian burial, right? We better start digging then. Don't want to be out here when it gets dark. Right, let's get started. The egg was slow and miserable. Thirty minutes went by and we'd only just barely cleared the topsoil. Given the lack of roots to hold the dirt together, I'd hoped the barren ground would yield a little effort. Instead, we had to contend with the thrice damp salt, stagnating land and water alike, resisting every ounce of change. As such, every blow was accompanied by a crystalline crunch when the shovel's blade managed to rip through a hidden lattice of the ground. I had time the holes up to my knees, and now familiar funk of a summer barnyard hung heavy in the air. Such close quarters, impossible to miss the sweat beading on Storm's brow, or the dampness soaking through my shirt. Neither he nor I saw fit to talk about it. Soon enough olfactory fatigue set in, and we got our own stench while we worked. Boldened by shared purpose and shared suffering, we soldiered on. Tried to ignore the sting of recall from each blow, the forming blisters on our hands and the general mountain exhaustion. We dug. The twelve for the hotel and for our future. All goes well, I thought, our wound shall issue into blessings. The soil quality continues to degrade, along with it the stability of our would-be grave. The layer of sand and silt beneath the loam threatened to collapse in on us every fresh spadeful we removed. So all I could do to stabilise the walls while Storm climbed out, once prudence forced us to throw in the towel. Storm huffed and puffed and dragged the chest over the hole. Together we lowered it down as carefully as we could. It didn't nestle pretty comfortably in the sandy layer we dug into. Storm pulled me back out. We left panting from our exertion for a few moments. As soon as we caught our breath, it was time to begin the funerary rite. I picked up a handful of dirt, motioned for Storm to do the same, and held it out in front of me. You all didn't deserve what has happened to you. Sorry for what my grandfather did. I hope your spirits can rest easier now, at least a little bit. I dropped the dirt onto the chest. Uh, I hope you're all getting more mercy from God now than you ever got from people in life. Storm dropped his dirt as well. A single moth flew between our shoulders and paused in its journey to weave and bob before the grave. Finally it flew around the hole, frightened off into the distance as quick as its wings could carry it. What exactly were we supposed to make of that? We took another quick breather and resumed the work of covering the grave again. Thankfully that didn't take nearly so long. Afterwards, Storm gathered a number of stones to line the grave. I, meanwhile, returned to the car and retrieved the sunken church's cross from its spot in the back seat. The cross was a good size, about two hand lengths tall, and still sturdy and spent spending decades in the water. Together we managed to prop it up in the centre of the mound with some more stones and solid earth. A fine Christian burial marker if I'd ever seen one. 
We should probably say some kind of prayer. We both bowed our heads and closed our eyes. Silent recited every prayer in doxology I could remember for sure. And may your souls rest in peace. Amen. We stood there for a minute, waiting for something to happen. Storm opened a single eye and looked around, bit his lip and flicked his ears. Oh, nothing's happening. I know. Uh, is this how it's supposed to go? No clue, I've never done this sort of thing before. Um, the hotel should be popping up somewhere around here now, right? I don't know if that's how it'd work. We can't rule it out. Seems like a place to start, at least. We drove all around the area. No luck. The hotel was nowhere to be seen. The surrounding land was just as desolate as before, but even more so in the sweat-soaked darkness. The signs which permeated the car before had been replaced with signs of fruitless exhaustion. Even the hotel really was somewhere out there. I don't think either of us would have seen it in the state we were in. Don't be tapping his hooves the rhythm of each pothole we went over when we counted the roaming cloud of butterflies. The little bastards moved halfway on the road. When I tried to drive around, a handful or two made a beeline toward the car. Storm braced himself and I sped ahead to get away from the swarm. A good amount of the things still managed to squeeze their way in, either the cracked open windows or the AC vents. I pulled her onto the shoulder and two of us spent a few minutes flailing around to get them either out of the car or smashed. That god I'm cocksucking vermin. That the last of them? Oh uh, yeah, boss. No of us are gonna cra get us to crash the car now. We drove on. Still nothing. We both kept a watch on the distant landscape for some clue, some inkling of progress. At some point in our interminable search, Storm turned to me. So how long do you reckon it take me to get a high school diploma? It's meant to take three years. There may be some schools that do expedited programmes for people your age. No idea how long it takes if you do online schooling though. That's that's an option. Well, how would I do with a computer? I always wanted to go through high school. It looks so cool in the movies. Everyone's having a good time, singing, playing football and going to prom. All them schools look so nice and pretty that they get old lockers all down the hallways. Yeah, if my charm keeps working this well, I'd even get to be homecoming king. Or maybe I'll start a garage band if I can find a garage nearby. You ever play electric guitar, P? Do you have a garage? Couldn't suppress a tiny chuckle. Storm's ears drooped with the sound. Yeah, if someone's got disappointed, better mean someone will actually fuck him up. Sorry, it's a point. A resilient skulls are nothing like the American movies. I'm not sure of my experience with the norm, but everyone was miserable back in my school. For starters, if you tried to sing like some kind of faggot, you'd get sucker punched like one. We didn't have sports or a gym. Hell, yeah, we barely got any, got any sun or exercise at all. Always only a meter and a half wide too, so no rockers anywhere. So I promise I skipped out on that bullshit entirely. I won't spend a single second longer than I had to around my classmates. We're all sick to death of each other. Last day of school I had everyone crying about how they keep in contact and all that. Then no one ever bothered to get together again. Oh, uh -huh. well, what about those yellow buses? No way. Damn. What? Did you have to wear uniforms too? Of course, we didn't get to go, go to class in just any clothes we wanted. Did you have the cool kids though? And the nerds, the jocks, the punks and the bitchy girls? Kid, they worked our asses off at that school. We didn't have time or energy to wear any of that clicky bullshit. We'd have a few major cunts though, as all schools do. Oh, I know that already. I'm talking to one of them right now. Boss? Okay, that was a good one. I'll let it pass. Oh, thank God. I think it just scared me alive. I know I'm a cunt. Guilty as charged. Kid still seemed pensive, looking more into himself than out of the darkening landscape. Yeah, guilty as fucking charged. Only a major cunt like you would keep the kid scared to talk back and tell you what you deserve to hear. And breathe deep inside. Any other questions about school? Oh, uh, yeah, so... 
Well, there weren't no jock and punk leaks in your school. Did you have something like a group of mythicals? Would that have helped any? Would there have been any inherent camaraderie there? Would it have just fed more bitterness into more directions? I uh, know, there aren't that many of us. Well, damn. Well, what about the teachers? Did you have any of those real tough ones who do care about you deep down or rooting for you all along and all that? I did, but not every school is like that. Plus, it doesn't help as much as you might think. I had some buddies who had a rough family life and got real close to the teachers who helped them a lot. That can go bad real quick when you graduate and you can't really talk with them like you did. It can fuck you over. Teens can be fragile like that. Man, your school sounds boring. What was it even like to actually go there anyway? It's sort of a cram school for university entrance exams. The kind that needs a therapist on site 24 7 because students are just having breakdowns left and right. We had some good teachers, yeah. They push us to our limits and beyond every day from start to finish. That's how you pass the harder exams, of course. I go to school around 6 30 am, spend all day having classes and studying, get out at 8 pm. Then I go and have some extra math classes up until 11 pm or so. Rent to repeat five times per week with a lighter schedule on Saturdays. We do get Sundays off though, giving the students some time to rest, increase their extra exam performance. Jesus fucking Christ, that sounds like hell. Did you even have time to sleep? I don't sleep, remember? If anything, that meant I had it easy. Got myself eight hours of free time every day. Oh, okay. Did you at least have a garage band? Nah, I didn't like having hobbies or distractions. I tried learning the guitar as a kid, but that didn't last long. Mom thought it would be better for my future if I learned Spanish instead. So you didn't have the band, but did you at least have a garage? Well, apartment buildings have a, have a garage. It's shared with everyone, so you can't really play instruments there. It was clearly of two minds by that point. He read it plain on his face as he tossed around options in his head. Even certain questions unasked and maybe starting to feel a little overwhelmed. He looked over to me when he asked. I really have to go to high school. <laughs> Sounds horrible. Yeah, that's right, you prick. Destroy his passion for learning. Keep yourself on top and grind his face down in the dirt. You feel real goddamn big, don't it? What, are you trying to turn me into your dumb muscle lackey like you're some kind of cartoon villain? You fucking joke. Yeah, we're going to play that sucky one when all this is over with. Definitely won't have to go through the same shit I did. His ears drooped less and I could see a smile struggling onto his lips. So have you any thought of what you'd like to do for work? You ever dream of having a certain job or anything? He finally turned back towards me. Oh yeah, I know exactly what I want to be. A musician. You're feeling awfully cheeky tonight, aren't you? If I'd laughed openly that, I'd never have forgiven myself. Oh, that's my rebellious phase. Now you're telling me high school just sucks. But yeah, I really do want to be a musician. I know there's schools for that and all. I'd like to think I have some talent. It doesn't bring a lot of money, but hey, I'm used to living with little. If I don't pay the bills, I can do some more jobs too, now that I have a charm. I don't even need people to remember me or anything. I'd be happy just composing and recording my songs. Back when I was in a big city, I saw this guy selling his new age ambient hip hop album on the street corner. Where a push comes to shove, I could just do that. We'll see. One step at a time, though. First, we find a hotel. When that's done, we'll look into getting you into a school and learning an instrument. Now, let's talk a little more searching. If you find that place and I get what I want, I'll buy you a guitar or something. His eyes brightened at that. Aye, aye, boss. Positive reinforcement seemed to be working out pretty damn well, actually. Both the kid and I were in a much better mood without the rest of our drive that night. Maybe we were only stone's throw from that goddamn hotel. Or maybe we were just hoping some of his eagerness would rub off on me. Or maybe we were just fishing for appreciation and ass pants. Either way, even if we didn't find what we were looking for, we'd made a plan for afterwards. For a little while, at least. I can pretend I was capable of doing something good.
We set out earlier than usual that morning. Everything's been going just right. Yeah, it's some refreshing humidity to it, but often enough to attract mosquitoes. Even that little breeze coming in through the window. When Storm and I got out of the room, there were four moths resting on the outside of the door. An auspicious sign if I have ever seen one. Fluttered their wings and wiggled their antennae at us. For some reason, I couldn't shake the feeling they were waiting for something. Top it off, no one seemed to notice I kept the Hail Mary mug. I still hear that. There's only one issue. No breakfast. Quality fucking service right there. Yeah, I ran to the owner earlier and he explained the situation. Remember the guy you found passed out in the kitchen the day before yesterday? Yes, he seemed like a decent enough fellow. Well, the owner calls him druggy. He told me the guy ain't coming back anytime soon. The one who made yesterday's breakfast was the owner's daughter. She don't feel like doing it no more, so basically we're on our own now. Oh, and no refunds. How nostalgic. It's like when I visited as a kid. So many memories. You also say you seen her closing the inn down for a while. Well, it's because he's missing one employee. No, it's because something else entirely. So something bad's going to happen soon. He's probably skipping town till it blows over. Apparently there's a big mess going on in the Colonel's mansion. His family's all there having a whole ass crisis with his widow over the inheritance. He always afraid he's about to get violent. He'd rather not be here when shit goes down. The in the back of my neck ruffled up, my fingers tightened their grip on the steering wheel. We might have to change our plans depending on how that goes. Well, it's the worst that could happen. They get in a fight and someone gets a black eye. Those is one more than likely. They cover other important parts. According to my grandpa, things get real bloody when the colonel's family is involved. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now, I've scrounged you up some breakfast. Said you had a couple of ideas, right? Yeah, everyone always says no trip to the hinterlands is complete without a visit to Lala's farm for some good homemade cooking. Just how good is her food exactly? Oh, no clue. Think she ever let me in? Look at that, nothing used for charm. I'm to experience the joy of tasting Lala's greasy cheese. Shit, just hope it's not cow cheese. Have faith. She's as good as you say. Lala ought to have something that doesn't have beef or cow products. Yeah, should have some halfway decent ham at least. Hell, we might even get some coffee there and shit for once. And let's not dream too big. And we decided after getting some breakfast, we'd check out. Let's take a look at this archaeological site. The Beach Mermaid takes its name from an oddity found near its founder's old home. A hundred years ago, after a chunk of the cliff's wall crumbled to reveal a cave, the villagers discovered a fossilised corpse embedded in the stone. The skeleton became well known due to its lack of a human lower body. What it had instead was a distinctly dolphin like anatomy, hence Beached Mermaid. While the town's namesake is a noteworthy tourist attraction, it's overshadowed by the hinterland's second greatest business, its diner. What should we do? Let's go and check out this site. Scientific community split on categorizing the Beach Mermaid as a peculiar example of the prehistoric funerary rite, or as an 18th century form of archaeological vandalism. I wonder, could it be an ancient mythical being from a time when this land was covered by the ocean? A majestic king of the sea laid to rest, perhaps? A Nereid far away from a tributary river, now reduced to just a dingy tourist trap? I know I was looking, I prayed for it, for its soul and dignity. Afterwards, we searched the area for any sign of clue about the hotel. But no luck. The early start was taking a lot out of us. Or maybe starting the day with a good filling breakfast the greasy cheese was catching up to us. Regardless, by sundown we were both nodding our heads and struggling to keep our eyes open. Been keeping quiet for at least an hour. Both of us lost in our own thoughts. When the kid half mumbled to me, it took me a moment to realise he was asking me a question. Oh, sorry, what was that? The oh, sunset's pretty, ain't it? I looked ahead, the blaze of oranges and pink staffled across the horizon. Yeah. 
Well, this is nice, ain't it? Just driving around and eating a meal at Lala's and having a shower every morning and sleeping in an actual bed every night. Keep in mind you're saying the vacation, kid. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just... Well, ever since I met you, it feels like I've been pulled into a whole different world, you know? Couldn't help but narrow my eyes and clench my jaw. What about this all of a sudden? Well, sunset's got me thinking is all. So don't fidget with his hands, his fingers interlocking and fighting each other. Thought that would be the end of the conversation, but then he spoke up again. Well, thank you for being here. Getting this charm feels like getting another chance at life. It may seem like I'm exaggerating, but you're the best person I've ever met. Oh, thank me, God damn it. You don't God damn it, the end of bullshit I've been telling you. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry, you've been surrounded by so many shitty people that I seem like a good guy in comparison. I don't know what I was expecting, but Storm laughed. Without fear or shame, not really worried about anything at all. Just a deep, rumbling laugh coming from deep in his chest. You're always saying that kind of stuff, Foss. And sure, you are a cunt when you want to be. Your actions speak louder than the shit you've been talking. You're mean on the outside, but good on the inside. Believe well, you me, I've met enough people who are real mean, real deep inside, and you definitely ain't that. You're real decent to me. No, you didn't have to. Well, I'm grateful to you. I if they're on the road shoulder. I wasn't sure if I was crying or not. I turned my face away from him just in case. And too many thoughts going through my head all of a sudden. All because of that goddamn bull. Stupid goddamn fucking. You don't even. How do you say something? Fuck. Why did the kid be nice feel so much like a punch in the gut? I couldn't stop my body from tightening up and trembling as I struggled to breathe past the knot in my throat. Then Storm put his hand on my shoulder. And his sturdy grip helped me to steady myself. I swallowed, wiped my stinging eyes, and then looked over to meet his gaze. Thanks. I guess I needed that. What you said and all that. Storm punched me on the shoulder. Maybe a little harder than he meant to. I think I could handle it with grace and composure. Oh, my pleasure, boss. Just tell it like it is. I put the car in drive, went the mind on my side, continued searching away of that labyrinth of winding roads and salted earth. On return to the inn, Storm insisted I take a shower. We had a whole discussion about it and how long it takes to dry my feathers. I said it was too late already. I said it wasn't because I wouldn't be sleeping anyhow, that cheeky bitch. All is hard as stone here, can't even get any foam going when I soak my hands. I'll be able to clean my feathers properly. I'll just get a fungal infection. In the end, we reached a compromise. He let me be if we went to a certain place first thing in the morning. We set out at 4.30am. According to his directions and my estimation, it would take us about an hour to get there. Half an hour I drove through the darkness, with Storm sleeping by my side in perfect silence. Storm was damn detailed about exact way to go, at least. The landmarks came in just the order he told me. I don't know it wasn't actually in the valley, but just outside of it. Been way down in there for about a week, climbing up in the foothills felt stupendous. It was all larger than life. The long shadows down below made the place seem almost dollhouse like in the rosy dawn. Dried up trees and houses are just little playthings to be picked up. It's almost beautiful when you're out of the grime you can see up close. The lilac sky up ahead, the red heated dawn on my feathers, seeing the barren wasteland of my rearview mirrors we climbed out of that hole. Felt like heaven. Storm surged, just as Wiggles get his neck into a better position. A storm. Kate was full of attitude throughout the day, but a little angel in his sleep. He even stayed deeper sleep to whatever noise I made during the night. All in all, he made for a decent roommate. Ten or so minutes later, I pulled into a truck stop to refuel and grab us some breakfast. When I returned to the car, he's rubbing the sand from his eyes while staring bleary around. Oh, where are we? That was our destination. It's not the directions you gave me. Woke up just in time, kid. I need you to guide me the rest of the way. Oh, yeah. I remember now. Greedy gaze went to my cup of coffee. Did you get me anything? Yeah, sandwich and coffee. It's in the paper bag. Oh, thanks, boss. 
The coffee vapour rose up to greet our noses. I almost have cried right then and there. It was my first cup of coffee in a week that didn't smell burnt or like stale instant powder. Storm seemed to feel the same way. The override in almost burned his tongue. We ended up holding our cups in front of the AC to cool him down. First sip tasted like sex. Oh, damn good coffee, Storm. Oh, damn good coffee. I didn't cheap out on the sandwiches fill in either. Never guessed this truck stop right here would have had the best food in the hinterlands. Storm got forward and spoke between chomps. Hardly bites, definitely chomps, with his sandwich. Oh, we're outside of it by now. The place I want to take you to is just further ahead. Hope it's worth a while. Oh, it will be. Maybe not for the investigation. I promise you're going to love it. I was thinking last night about those rights you taught me. The paper clip, the drinking and talking, but mainly the prevarication one. Since you're all getting yourself rid of bad energy, I think you'll like what I have in mind. The salt place or something. Because if it is, I'm not sure it's worth all the time it took to get you. No, it was way better. It's a neat little place I found when I tried running away a few years back. I ended up staying there for a week or so. The only reason I didn't stay longer is it's in the middle of nowhere, so getting food wasn't easy. Better not be wasting our time, kid. I finished my coffee and turned on the engine. So. Saw me wait to finish chewing and swallowing before he spoke. Coffee and food seemed to give him some eagerness as well as impatience. Let's keep going straight ahead. I'll point you in the right direction. With that, we set off. I drove eastward for ten more minutes before, by Storm's instructions, taking a ride down a bumpy clay road between two fenced-in properties. Hold on tight. A short while later, the fields gave way to a quaint trail sidelined by woods and trees. Their bark was shriveled and rough, and their branches still sported a brave covering of leaves. But the stone we reached a dead end. Beyond it there was no road, only brush. We got out and storm led the way. Not even twenty steps in I could already hear rushing water. On most trips we climbed down some craggy rocks. The storm's clacking hooves somehow held firm. On the inside of the trees an usually green canopy, see the dappled reflection of a natural pool or maybe a tiny lake. Now is that for purification of running water, boss? And more than that. Yes, it's a hot spring of drinkable mineral water. Damn, I didn't expect the Hinterlands to have a place like this. You ain't got to put a pretty little thing of this calibre down that hellhole. I told you, we ain't even in the Hinterlands anymore, that's why. By the time that stream there runs out of the valley, it just starts stagnating. There ain't much use then. Anyways, it's too out of the way to become a trendy place for tourists. Who else would want to visit a hot spring when the weather's so damn warm anyway? No one comes out here, save some of the farmhands. Even then, only when it's dark and breezy. We should have the whole place to ourselves. Real living water, mineral salts, a pure and beautiful place. It just speaks my week in the hinterlands, but the sight took my breath away. So I'm got handed to you, so it's well worth the drive. A deal's a deal. Guess it's bath time for Birdie. I began to unbutton my shirt and walked on ahead of him. So while to get you, we shouldn't waste any time, right? Hanging my shirt on a branch and setting my folded pants on a rock, I approached the spring's edge. I wet a foot to check the water's temperature. It was hard enough to be almost unbearable at first, but a minute or two of dipping my toes in got me acclimated. I made it back to shore together, hoping the cleanser would lead to a good fortune in our search. Of course, that's when we realised that neither of us thought to bring a towel. Ah, shit, I almost forgot. What? September 7th. Shit, you're right. I've been drifting so long I barely remember which days are holidays anymore. I mean, some spots around town are getting close. Just something to keep in mind. Ah, so there's not much open. Let's see what's going on in the town plaza, maybe. Town Plaza a narrow strip far on our main road for a hundred metres or so. One of the few places of any greenery in the hinterlands, even most of it led a miserably short life here withering and having to be replaced. So the building which I remember being a local cheese store as a kid was now abandoned. One of the candies my grandpa would buy for me from the shop he found somewhere else on the strip, I remember our purpose would be in there. 
but the grams had tried to be thorough. Imagine asking any of the sparse passers by at store clerks about a hotel might get only get some rolled eyes or blank stares. At any time of day there'd be a handful of people walking or loitering around the place. One ever caught our attention above all others. A rambling madwoman screeching in the middle of the plaza. See if we can tell what she's on about. We approach a woman, listen to her ramblings for a while. There are some men who walk on paths and pay, bumpy and unkind to most, but then there are the men who tread where there isn't any ground. Don't leave the wood rough on a house you're building or a chattering crow might perch on it and croak. The twelfth is much better than the eleventh, for on that day the wispy spider spins a web in broad daylight and the provident one scrapes up a pile. Right. I gave the woman food ears and we went on our way. Oh, I feel sorry for her. Well, as little here, the boys sort of made fun of her, said she was a witch or something. Well, she got worse since I was a kid. I don't know what happened. Did Grandpa get worse too? If that was right and Gramps was never any better than this old bitch had cost him people, but who knows what? It's not exactly what he did. Now, you? It can be really tragic to see someone go like that, even when you don't actually know them. Nice you stormed the field for her. I was arrested about the hotel. Some folks thought Gramps wouldn't have asked. But no luck. Street nights were swarmed by clouds of bugs, all driven wild by breeding season. Their shadows speckled and crawled on every surface like stitched together centipedes. I looked down and I could see them skittering over Mindstorm's chest. And they weren't actually there. I almost feel each pinprick leg digging into my feathers and skin. It feels like they're crawling all over me. Do you feel it too? Yeah, I'm used to it. It doesn't even bother me anymore except when I get around my ears. I mean, was Drown Tapir's greatest hangout spot, Zeze's Bar, which could be only described as a set of three canvas tents on the median of a street. There were a dozen plastic tables and chairs scattered around, all coloured and branded with assortment of beer logos. Can were just three stacked wooden boxes covered by a length of canvas recycled from a truck's covering. Music, tinny and half static, played from a parked soundtrack. Some of the patrons milled about while others danced, and all the tables were taken. Storm seemed a bit unfamiliar with what one even does at a bar. He elbowed his arm and motioned him to follow me. He and I took his seats by the counter on the wobbly wooden stools, and then it all fit in like clockwork. Time became perfect. All of a sudden, the corners of the night air was noticeable. The dull roar of folks talking mingled with the garbled radio into a warm sea of even sound. Music seeped down my back and ended every vile knot within it. I breathed out, pressed my shoes onto the beaten dirt. I looked at find a brick wall of an old man looking down at us. He smelled of stale beer and bitter sweat. Gavi's holding was tiny, almost toy-like in his monstrously big hands. His nostrils shook with every slow, ponderous wheeze, and with every step came the sound of creaking knees. Sweat dripped from his forehead on the counter, and he wiped it up with the same stained rag he used to polish the glasses. That was Zeze himself, but proud of that fine establishment. I didn't even notice he'd already taken our order. He stood behind the counter, pulled out a, to- a tall bottle of cheap, watery beer, and cracked it open with a movement too smooth and perfect to be rehearsed. Poured my drink into an ancient scratch Pyrex cup, the very same kind the inn used to serve coffee, and no doubt used here for the same purpose as well. Vertical grooves growing from the bottom up about ten or so centimetres, with a thin horizontal rim at the top, probably the most cost effective mass production. They don't have a single care for soul, aesthetics, or marketability. Says a poor storm's drinking a mismatched cup, and got us a portion of fries. Kid and I shared a silent toast, already feeling how cold the beer was. It was perfect. Your grandpa used to come here a lot. I thought you recently got cirrhosis. If I should remember him at all, though. I have a good memory. As with cirrhosis, if it weren't me, it'd be someone else. At least I watered his drinks down. That'll be worse, I mean. Nothing mattered much in the end. Storm tried to follow the conversation the proprietor and I talked, keeping his ears vaguely aimed in my direction. Once the buzz started hitting him, though, his eyes and attention began to wander. 
glanced over and found him looking a bit satisfied with himself for finally sitting at this counter. She doesn't know that her unremarkable face in the crowd. So are you working the Colonel's widow now? I know, sir. I don't want to get involved in any of that business. Not exactly looking for a job here. Yeah. What has been going on you being in town? With all the mess going on there, it's better you get involved. Yeah, that's like your gramps. I know, sir. Yeah, what brings you to down tape here, P? I'm just here on some inheritance business of my own, is all. Your grandpa left an inheritance. What do you even have to pass on? My time has been an indication. Grief and debt and nothing more. Though I did reconnect to the cousin of mine on my way here. Raised an eyebrow, giving Storm a dubious look. Cousin? Ah, that's a good one. Someone got some horn. horns growing in that family tree of yours. I stayed locked onto him in the room. My cups, I took a slow sip. I read my brain everything I'd heard about Zezé, either from Grandpa himself or my dad. They had told me he was like us, mythical. I didn't have any recollection of it. I suppose you're right. Storm here does look a bit different for me. I assume you got a keen eye. And I do, or so I like to think. I did looking up at him, staring at his face, trying to notice any tickle at the back of my mind or strange fuzziness in my vision. Even the best made charms aren't completely perfect if you know what to look for. There's always some kind of tell, some way to make it malfunction. I keep it in mind, it would seem. Considering you knew of my dear old grumps, do you happen to know anything about his search for a certain hospitality establishment? He laughed in perfect intervals. The humorous sound of it tightened the knots in my back right up again. Oh, you bet I do. Spent a dozen years telling you Gramps all about it, but never listened. That was my chance to save you from his madness. It's not madness. I'll find that goddamn man. Give up. Go home. Stop chasing a madman's dream. I can't go back. Not now. Or enough one of your relatives to waste his life on this lie. You're young. You have a good future ahead of you. You play your cards right. If you don't, that's better than dying alone and hated like your gramps. How can I? Well, your reason for coming is like that hotel. Let it go. Stop searching for magical fixture issues and solve them yourself. That bastard says they finished his speech and started cleaning glasses again. I just nursed my drink. The kid looked over and gave me a concerned frown. This looked like I'd just been shot. Okay, you're doing all right. Yeah, just thinking is all. Hey yeah, lad, I got over there has been eyeing you for a while now. The kid grunted, eyes wide, I don't expect to see the fur on the back of his head and neck stand up. It was all like all the confusion had right in a bar had suddenly returned. Oh, which one, sir? Oh, there, dancing. Long hair, the roots showing. Tom tried to straighten his hair, but once in his life he's subtle as he attempted to look over nonchalant without fully looking. Eh, go on and live a little fun, Storm. Dance with her. I even give you some cash to buy her a drink. His ears went fully red as he looked away from me, which forced him to finally make eye contact with the girl. Storm gave the most timid wave you could see from a man in the hinterlands as she beckoned him over. Kid threw his drink back, looked to me, sealed his nerves and went to chat her up. Says that I couldn't hear him, we could see him speaking with clips and halting awkwardness. He seemed quite charmed, however, giggling and moving to entice. And down my cup. Storm shook his head and shrugged his shoulders. She gave him a cartoonish pout and asked something. Storm shrugged again. As drunk young women know what to do, she gave him a hug for waving down another young woman to tell her at the table and tottering off. Storm strolled back on over. Right, what the hell was that? Get him on a dance? Uh, I told her I was real flattered, but I'm here on business. Alright, boss? Hmm, yeah, I guess so. Here's something wrong. I called my vision. I saw Zeze make himself busy at the end of the counter. Bastard didn't even offer me another drink. A storm. I know I'm not crazy. I know my grandpa wasn't lying. I know that place exists because I've seen it. Having visions of it at night, just like Gramps used to have. It's everything he described down to the last detail. We spent a whole week digging around this shit and we're not close to finding it. I have no idea where to go from here. What the hell do we even have to show for it? Well, we figured out the whole mess with the 12 tapirs, didn't we? Well, according to say closed hotel, but... Boss, we put their souls to rest. Ain't that worth something? Did we? I'm not even sure of that anymore. 
You know, a proper respectful burial. That's worth something, at least to me. No matter what, it's better than sticking a pile of bones inside a chest in that mansion. We did good, okay? Oh, we wanted, but you should be proud of it, boss. Gotta stop paying myself this son of a bitch. He's gonna keep saying the exact right thing to get me welling up. Big old Zeze just let her huff and shook his head while putting away glasses. Fuck to lose away every goddamn one can see you. It's fine. Fuck Zeze for every goddamn one else. But thanks. Thank you, Storm, for yeah, putting up with my shit. Get out and give me a pat on the back, then lean me off my stool. That's why you're paying me, ain't it? Let's go a whole other week to go before you have to get back to the city, right? I'm sure we can find something about the hotel with all that time. It still exists in the first place. You're it yourself. You know it's out there. Because you saw it. Yeah, he says it. Give me another beer and make it colder than death. Can't believe you got drunk that quickly. I may have had a few too many, but I knew damn well the kid really was drunk. A few of years too. So I had to practice drinking for his size. I think Carrie and me were leaning on each other when we walked back to the hotel. I took like a gentleman and shut the door while I went and collapsed backwards onto the bed. Just needed to lie down and felt a, felt a little less dizzy. I have to find that hotel. It's not about the inheritance. Storm sat beside me. Oh, what's it for? My dad and myself, many for my own peace of mind. Grandpa worked for the Colonel, my dad worked for a private security firm, and I worked for the Federal Police. That's our purpose, all we're really good for. At least that's what I've been told all my life. I told you I'd do my time on the force, did I? Oh, I didn't like meeting two no nosies, so I never asked. Well, it's simple, really. Are you familiar with the concept of a panopticon? No? Very well, where should I start? You don't need to sleep us peacocks. These feather vars aren't just for show. Each one is a fully functional eye. I can bend and regular eyes. I can still see just fine through the feathers I plucked from myself, and sometimes I can even see through charms I made with them. Sano went to a gauge in his ear, pinching and rubbing it. I even grow back too. Wouldn't you say we're the perfect security guards? Where are you going with this? Well, I work for the police. Doesn't mean I did what I did was right or even legal. But bluntly, my job was doing what we called mass surveillance. The superiors knew exactly what I was capable of. That's why they hired me in the first place, you know. It started simple enough. See, a few years back they installed some fancy surveillance network. For national security reasons, of course. What's 10,000 cameras good for if no one's watching them? That's what I did. Watch and report everything that went on. Does that sound right to you? Well, can't say no much about the law. If you're not doing anything wrong, then why should you worry? Good folk won't get affected by it. Listen, no. It may sound acceptable at first. What happens when you catch a fellow police officer doing something wrong? You report it. Oh, Storm. You delete it and make it look like a computer error. That was the next step after I settled into that position. What do you think happens when, say, someone in the force just gets a feeling that something, someone's doing something wrong? Do you go to a judge and get a warrant? Yeah. No, you come and get me to stalk him for you. That's what happens when officers matter sex. When an investigation needs a stronger case, they ask you for a few recordings. Maybe they need a few recordings to disappear. I sat up. I didn't look at Storm, but I could feel his eyes on me. When a politician, simply put, doesn't like that they were recorded somewhere they didn't want to be seen. Maybe doing something very wrong? Go on, he's finally seen you for who you really are. Learn about it somehow eventually, so might as well rip the bandage off now. If you're doing him a favour, he starts hating you too. He's not dumb, he knows what's good for him. He'll leave tonight, so just pretend you're passed out from the beer and let him... You know, the main case of police officers that... What they do is keep a second illegal gun at home. Five or so and pull together the money to buy a stolen motorbike and they keep it unplated so they can... Never mind, let's not get into that. You understand that my time working in the police was far from exemplary. 
Do I know the best part, though? The funniest part, that is. Storm nodded. Tell you how quick there's too much I want to stick to my morals, but that'd be a lie. Because they bought a fancy artificial intelligence system and do my job at a fraction of the cost. Turns out computers are just better than magic. I I did want a quick it was wrong, you know. That's the real reason. I was just on my way to being obsolete. Ha, <laughs> the paper is nothing special either. Ugly squawking laugh again. If you weren't enough a deplorable piece of shit, you could kill anyone's eardrums with that. Storm stared down to his shuffling hooves. Keep going, just show me how close he was to being pulled into your spiral. My grandpa's the only one in the family who didn't really want to do this kind of business. That's why he kept chasing the hotel. Hopefully it would be his way out. He always told me to keep trying, to do good. That's hard to find it. To prove that I can do something right and, and good for once in my life. And if I can't, it's right back to whatever job my dad wrangles me next. Probably doing the same shit as before, but for a private firm. Come on, kid, I know what you're thinking. I'm a mess. I don't deserve to have you see me as your hero. Don't need to waste your time with me anymore. Just say what's on your mind, goddamn you. So, still think I'm a good person? Why'd you take that job? Because everything else I tried failed and I had bills to pay. I should have had a job before all this mess. I tried to do good for a while, I just kept going to shit again and again. So one day I just gave in to Dad and took the job offer he got for me. Could only remain unemployed for so long, you know. His fists were clenched, his brow was pursed in thought. Every breath he took was shallow and tense. So, man, you want to punch my lights out? Go on, it's the least I deserve from you. Now, is that any different from me stealing to survive? You wanted to stop, you just couldn't. I mean, I only stopped because I had to. I was going to be fired either way. Oh, don't matter. You did what you had to do to survive. Yeah, it was bad, but now what? A little huff, not quite angry, but lively with anxiety. You're gonna feel sorry for yourself? Cry? Grab my shoulder, rough, but I could feel his hand trembling. Look at me, you piece of shit. You're still up your own ass with this bullshit about your grandfather. I'm telling you, I'm doing something right, but look at me. He forced me to look him in the eyes, glaring but red and watery. I was ready to die, because my life was always, always would be hell. Then you came around, and a single night you gave me a future. After this is done, be able to hold a job, go to school, maybe even get a degree or some shit. Ain't that good enough for you? What, you some emperor or something? This little life like mine don't matter one way or the other to you? You did a bunch of fucked up stuff, sure. But you ain't doing any more, and I'm real, damn it. Helping others matters, and you help me. I'm not living fucking proof you can do right. Behind the hotel you're looking for, if all you want to is prove you can do something good, and you can stop your search. You have a real life mine at all to vouch for you now. If you feel so bad about that damn job of yours, then fuck, like, listen to your own advice and go to school. Learn something new, for God's sake. Love all this, holy. Stop with all your fucking bullshit. Just, just be normal for once in your life. I could say anything. He pulled me forward and wrapped his arms tight around me. Maybe just so he could half yell into my ear. I know what you're kind of, I'm only trying to be nice. Don't go moping about your dad treating you like shit. Most of all. Who the fuck calls his kid P? What the fuck kind of name is that? Storm released me from the hug, but kept holding my shoulders. I ain't falling for that. That's why you're a sad cunt. You're so stuck up your own ass, you won't even tell people your fucking name. He shook me. I must have been staring off into space. I forced myself to look at him and nodded. He was right. All this time I'd be moping and crying, he stayed right by my side through all my bullshit. I sniffled and wiped my eyes and swallowed so hard I gave him the apology he deserved. You should just... Oh, no, you don't, you fucking asshole. No more bullshit. No being a sad, angry god. I'm kind of normal feeling sorry for yourself. You want to do right, William? You're being the kind of mentor he deserves? Pull your head out of your goddamn ass and listen to what he's telling you this time. You're right. Damn right I am. Storm paced a few steps. We're doing this the right way now. No more sass or stupid mystery bullshit, you hear? Well, I'm not Storm. That's just a nickname I was given when I tried joining that gang. My real name's Oscar. And what's yours? I 
I had all the air drift on my lungs that my entire body deflated and relaxed when Max's big breath made me look back up at him again. My grand car, car called me Pedro. Well, that's kind of normal, I wanted to hear. That suits you. Introduction of the way both allowed semi shy awkwardness to wash over us, glancing into each other and looking away, then peeking away from the corner of our respective vision. Moments like that are why I could be accused of avoiding earnestness. Where the hell do you even go from there? I should have expected you to be called Oscar. Well, why is that? Because you're a real prize. <laughs> Boss, you're fucking great. And that's where we're going to leave Manto Hotel for now. I think we're almost finished with the Hinterlands. So we'll pick that up uh, next time and carry on with the rest of the story. And for next week will be more from Dawn Corps heading back north again for that. I'm going to wrap this up quickly because talking like people that long is a real strain on my throat. So as always, thanks to my donors on Patreon and Ko-fi. And my top patrons are Burnt Toast, Kartek, Cobas Visser, Vesuksu, Lark Huskerton, Bastian, Brian Hall, Winner Muller, Tiger Cup, Ida Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragowolf, Marcus, Evan King, and Monoli. And if you want to support the channel, there's some links down below, but you don't have to whatsoever. As long as you're watching, it's good. That's all. This money's quite tight for a lot of us at the moment. So that's it for now. Until next weekend, bye for now. <laughs>